Right, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to another segment of uh, the Easy Talk on Canon Fodder TV. And it's a special Easy Talk. Uh, we've got the H-Men back again. I think it's yeah. the <laughs> H-Men. H-Men are back in the house again. But we've got um, Dave, who's um, part of a Dial Square FC. So if you remember last year, it was last year. Was it last year, Dave? It was last yeah, year. Yeah, last year, yeah. It's gone quick. It's gone very, very quick. A sign of age, they say. Oh, um, yeah. So we're going to be talking to Dave, uh, you know, uh, actually for the, the majority of this show here. Uh, you can put your questions uh, in the live chat, but keep it topical. I know we're here basically talking about Arsenal, but we're, this is a special uh, easy talk. And John Nagisa Gunas, Gunas? Guna has just joined us. John, how's it going, fella? Evening, Gunas. We're live, are we? Hello, right, John. Hey, John, we, are are in we are indeed. We are indeed. We're live. We're live. So um, let's hey, get Vince into Vince. this one. But um, we've got um, well, I've got some some sad news um that I need to uh, talk about first before we go anywhere uh, on this. Uh, sad news. Uh, Kathy uh, Ferguson, wife of a uh, uh, Manchester United uh, ex-manager uh, Alex Ferguson, dies at age eighty-four. Lady Kathy Ferguson, the wife of a uh, former manager, I say, uh, but the bedrock. Has passed away age 84. A Glaswegian native, Kathy Holden, met her husband to be while they were working together in a typewriting factory. My goodness, 1964. Uh, they were married two years later and went on to raise three children and 12 grandchildren over the course of a relationship that endured for more than half a century. So I'm sure, fellas, you will join me and pass our condolences to, well, Ferguson, uh, Alex Fergie, and the whole family um, over there. Really, really sad. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, do you want to say anything before we go on? Anyone want to say anything? No, sure about that. The, I suppose he was the dominant figure for the early 15 20 years of the Premier League, really. He was the, the uh, up to let's say before Arsenal Wenger came in, he dominated the thing completely. And then, would say, when Arsenal, maybe after the Invincibles uh, uh, team, when Chelsea came in, he was also. Their major uh, rivals. So he was. You know, he's probably about twenty. They haven't won a championship since he retired. So he's such a significant yeah. figure, and really, Pep Guardiola, I suppose, is is now seen as the Alex Ferguson of this era. But I think Fergie, uh, in some ways, but particularly uh, Celtic people and anyway, Welsh and, and Irish kind of, they saw it's, uh, maybe a bit of themselves in him. All right, but he was he was a unique yeah. character, but a, a famously um, I was a, a volatile and lover. And of course, he introduced Fergie time. I actually do remember <laughs> when, when he was manager of Aberdeen, they broke the duopoly of, of Celtic and Rangers. And I remember thinking, Jesus, this team was good. They went a long way and won one of the European trophies. And they were doing really well. And then apparently, any uh, people who know the Arsenal history will actually know Arsenal had him had him lined up to, uh, to get him in as manager. I forget what happened, but uh, I think we kind of dithered a bit, as uh, as Arsenal do a lot. And then in came Man, Man U, and the rest is history. So uh, he's a top manager, but of course the, the two things close to his heart, as well as Aberdeen and Man United, would, would be his dear wife, his children and grandchildren, and we said they're a couple of generations. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, can, so, uh, can I just yeah. say, yeah, 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 I'd like to give that family my deepest uh, sympathy, man. That, that's not yeah. easy for any family. And uh, yeah. Terry Terry and Tim can uh, get me on this. I, I believe um, Alex Ferguson, his wife, uh, one was Catholic, one was Protestant. Back in the day, that was quite a, uh, you know, that, that was quite a radical yeah. thing. You know, you get, yeah. And the fact you, that had, had the you could get Catholic, Catholic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you could get quite a lot of stick for that in them back in them days. And uh, Alex Ferguson is a working class lad that's done really well. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. That's awesome. yeah, that's, uh, probably yeah. the best manager. He had this kind of, I suppose, look at the we'll go on to think more after on it, but he definitely uh, was the draw, the, the 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 triple winning team. That team was a this class of '92. Although he really kind of maybe brought English football back into Europe. So after, like, obviously English teams were shoved out from the, from the, the, you know, due to the, uh, the hooliganism, and, and then they came back in. But I think he won, obviously, when he won the European Cup in 99, they put English football back to where it was. So I think in the time that they had left, 
obviously the Italian football, this famous AC Milan team had kind of taken over and that was seen seen as the top league in the world and I'd say mm. ask uh, he, he, he made English football take over that man to give it. Yeah. Yeah, another, um, tes- another testament um, to Alex well, Ferguson is, is you, you um, look at the amount of players that, oh sorry John I was going to say another another testament to Alex Ferguson is, is look at the players that's played for him not only at United but Aberdeen that have gone on to be top level managers you know and including his son for, for a bit you know it, it's not what he achieved it's what he passed down as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave do you think there's still um, I don't know a, a space for a manager like Alex Ferguson in these modern times in football Oh, I don't know. I mean, you, you talk about a player now, you know, and a player will come with the agent and it will come with a lawyer and, you know, what you're allowed to say to these players now, I don't know. Has it changed that much? You know, um, Fergie was very old school, um, you know, very much the man in charge, but he seemed to have turned a little bit now to player power, I yeah. feel. So would he get on? If you look at managers like Brian Clough, Arguably the greatest manager we've ever seen. You know, at the end of his time, it was it was starting to go the other way, and yeah. you know, I, 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 I feel really sad because it, it is it, the, the manager should run the club, in my opinion. You know, and a player should do what the manager wants. The manager is employed to produce for the club, and and when the players start getting involved, and like I say, they come with their entourage now. It, I think it takes takes a lot away from the game. Yeah, yeah, well said, well said. Uh, uh, John Geezer, are you wearing, uh, what, what top are you wearing? Is that a Dahl Square top? I thought I'd put the old Dahl Square on. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of, uh, I won that. Actually, Stuart gave me that, I think, last year. I won it in some competition. You won it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I wear this with pride, man. I love it. And hold on, lads. Uh, Oh, it comes a mug. Got a nice cup oh, got as well. It. Hey! I've got the own one. That's the one I want, Dave. I want that one. <laughs> sure. I'll get one to you. Cheers, nice one. So, like I said, this is special on Easy Talk, and um, the last time uh, Dave was on with, with Mark, we were talking about uh, Dark Square um, FC and how it was created, and a lot has happened since then. Dave, do you want to, you know, g- give us a, a kind of a first? Yeah, first last, yeah. Lo- last season has been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, since we was on last time, we um, got about just for Christmas, and uh, our manager decided to to move on, which was a shame. Simon Martin, he got us promoted in our first full season. Um, a few players left as well, some big names. So. A little bit of turmoil, but then we, we got a fantastic manager in called Steve Brown. He came in and not only steadied the ship, but got us uh, in the second spot, which got us promoted um, up another level again, which was fantastic. Um, the main news, I suppose, was Stuart Morgan left the club as well. He was he was the main man, the driving force. He, uh, there he is. Um, what he did in... Creating not just creating the club but keeping it going was 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 remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, about this time last year, he had a really nasty accident at work, um, which he, he was in hospital for a long time and he, he took a long time to recover. Um, and he left the he, he basically had the down tools on the football. So, you know, he's a self-employed fella. He's got his own life as well. Something had to give, so we down tools on the on 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 the football side of it. Um, so myself, uh, Mark, and, and Tony Hurley, our chairman, we, we had a meeting to say how we could, you know, get over this and, and push the club forward and and keep it going. Our, our Stuart would have would have liked, um, obviously, putting our stamp on it as well, and that's what we've managed to do. Mm, yeah, I imagine it's been very very tough as well. Turmoil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. you know, you know, me. What we've got now is so Tony Early's our chairman. Um, he was chairman when Stuart was there. He, he's got a massively successful background in financial services. Um, we've got Andy, who's, who's a senior communications consultant and PR specialist. So together, that gives us a fantastic angle on on, on getting certain tasks done with with professionalism and transparency, which is exactly what we need. Uh, Mark's the club secretary and he's fantastic. He just deals with every football matter, where we're playing, what we're playing in, you know, is, is everything by the FA rules, etc. 
And then myself, I'm, I'm a uh, supporter liaison controller, which means that I'm sort of like the go-between between the ball and the fans. It's in, we felt it was massively important being a fan-owned club. We just needed that bridge. Um, so, if you know, if supporters can come to me rather than the ball getting 300 questions at once. Come through me. I can answer most of them myself. And similarly, if, if the ball need to pass something back, um, it can come through me or also Andy that does a lot of our media work as well. Um, and that's what we're doing going forward. And it is, it's just giving us a little bit more professionalism, if I'm going to be honest. And, and it's a little bit simpler as well. Yeah. And before before I open up to the other guys, uh, uh, Dave, uh, maybe a silly question. But if somebody yeah. came along with a bucket load of money wanting to invest or buy... Dalska, what, what are your thoughts ab about that? Having one person owning Dal Square FC? Well, I don't like that. Is there isn't at the moment? We've got there's 74 of us that, that that have got a part of it. What happened was, if you remember last time I spoke about the Dal Square Enterprise, which was a company yeah. set up by Stuart um, that the fans bought into every season, and that controlled 15 percent of the club. And as the club um, was going to get bigger, then Stuart was going to release more and more and more of it to the fans until at one, you know, to 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 the point where we were 100% fan owned. Look, at one point last year, we, we put it to the fan owners that the enterprise, for the money it was costing, there was there was so much legal stuff involved with it. It was a properly run company, um, and it just wasn't commercially viable, uh, financially viable to keep it running with the money it was bringing in. So we decided that money would be much better off in Dole Square. We put it to the fan owners and they voted to support that. So what we did, we, we um, when Stuart, before Stuart left, he disbanded the enterprise. And I have to, I have to say a big thank you to Andreas as well, who was the chairman of the, of the enterprise and worked tirelessly to, to keep that going. Um, we then came up with a share option uh, scheme. You know, um, Tell, do you remember the uh, you, you, me you mentioned the Wimbledon one? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's similar to that, but um, there was money put into the club. The money that we had in the club, we converted into shares and allowed the fans to buy the shares um, in varying amounts. And that's what we've got at the moment. So we've got seventy-four uh, shareholders, if you like, that own a part of the club. It, 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 it's about just under twenty-five percent of Dole Square at the moment is fan-owned. The enterprise was 15%, so we've already grown it a little bit. Um, and that is how it's running at the moment. There will be – the, the, the share options is, is closed at the moment. And what we've also done is protect it from – let's give you an example. Say um, those wonderful people at AFTV came in with a bucket load of money, right, and said, we want to buy this. Can't do it. We're all protected against it. The share option was a limited, limited time offer. We put it forward to our fan owners and, and the people that follow us on social media first. That's now closed. And then we're, now we're looking at next season and what we can do and continue down that road to grow the fan ownership a little bit more. Dave, have you ever thought of pig piggybacking on a current club that has all the ground and the, and you, you go in al alongside them and try and bring, bring in? I know at the moment there aren't a lot of people go going to matches, but it seems to me... You're trying to build it from from ground zero. That's very hard, and I think you're in Chertsey now, aren't you? You're not near near uh, Woolwich. We are so, in Chertsey. We're we, we're yeah. using their ground. Their, their facilities are, are fantastic, both for the players and for the fans. It's easy to get to. It's central to the league we're in, um, so um, we're using them at the moment. We haven't really got any plans to to to, to piggyback anybody. To be honest, we want our own identity. Um, we've got a ridiculous fan base. It is a ridiculously brilliant wide fan base. You know, some of our, our shareholders, we've got shareholders now in Finland, America, Australia, Canada, Germany, you know, for, for a step eight side, that's that's ludicrous. Yeah, but, but brilliantly that, ludicrous. Problem, you, you just aren't getting the sort of punters in through the uh, turnstiles. Well, that don't matter at the moment because we can't charge anyway. We're step eight. You can't charge anything till step six. So we've oh. still got two years minimum at the moment where we can build the fan base um you know the game on saturday we have we had over 100 supporters most of our core were down in bournemouth um and we had a and we had a train strike and we still pulled in over 100 supporters uh, uh, step eight so which, you said which was fantastic you're, 
your your you're on tier eight, is it? So going up to the EPL at tier one, is it? Yes. Yeah, well, if if the Premiership's uh, number one, we 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 stepped we we're tier twelve. Tier so 12. step eight of the step eight of the non league pyramid, yeah. Oh, God National God. league being step one. Yeah. It just it occurs to me that somehow without the thing sort of dribbling away, you need somehow to sort of get get placed closer to to Arsenal, not on the doorstep, not in Islington or anywhere. But there will be a lot of fans who, when Arsenal playing away, and they know that uh, that uh, Dial Square are at home. If it was a quick run in the car or a quick tube journey, they'd go, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go down and see them. Uh, whereas yeah. at that moment, I had to even look it up and I thought, Chertsey, that's a long way. And before then, it, it was Woolwich or somewhere that you were in. It, just, it feels to me like you're not close enough to... I know all Arsenal fans come from all, all over the world. I've been in many cup finals when you chat to them and they go, I'm from Wolverhampton and I'm from... One bloke was from uh, Scotland somewhere. So pick the fan base is massive, but an awful lot of people are in that kind of North London area. So have you ever thought of doing some sort of a relocation there? We've looked at all sorts of options, but one thing you've got to remember is at the moment we're not pulling in any money. Like, like we just mentioned, we haven't got a gate. And we can't just tip up in London and go, yeah, we're playing here. You know, land's at a premium. The prices are ridiculous. How are we going to maintain? How are we going to maintain that for a start? You know, at the moment we're a Surrey-based club. You know, that's where our fan base is coming from. That's where the players are. If we suddenly up and moved, um, and, and don't get me wrong, we will move one day. Where, who knows? In my lifetime, um, perhaps sooner. We we, we recognise the fact that if we're going to keep going with this project, we can't stay at Jersey. We do need to find our own ground, but. You know, lands at a premium anywhere in the M25 is is crazy. And, and how at our level are we going to sustain that with no money coming in? No, I mean, it's a, it occurs to me, and I'm looking much broader now, that uh -huh. if you had some ex-players, Flamini and all these guys that are worth, uh, are absolutely minted, if you had a group, group of them who backed your sort of project and the, the deal was that they pump in a serious amount of cash and uh, but they were never allowed to have more than say 30 percent of the club once they put in their money, you know, then maybe it would kick start it a bit more. I just feel what I'm worried about is if this doesn't take off the ground after a few seasons, if, especially I know it's a terrible thing to say, but if Arsenal were doing well, you'll probably get less people interested. And as soon as we had all that Ferrari with Cronky, a lot of people like myself. We're really keen on get getting involved in the, in a Phoenix Ars, Arsenal club, um, and I still think there's a that I did look at. I did a bit of homework, and I did look up. There, there, there is a main road FC, which is a Phoenix Man City. There is what's the team they call it? United FC of Manchester or something. So that's a Man U one, and quite a lot of Brent, Brentford apparently. I didn't notice until recently. They were kind of largely fan owned, and then this guy came in and offered money and, and, and bought it out. I just get the feeling if you could get like a sugar daddy, i.e., a group of ex players who have the spare cash, could put together and kickstart the, the sort of whole thing, um, and then you could you could you could go places, you know. Yeah, I mean that's 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 something for the ball to discuss. Um, the the thing is as well is. It's no good having all this set up if we ain't doing it on the pitch. That's what we need to concentrate on. You know, we need to win games and get out of the leagues. We can have all the set up if we like. You know, we can have the, we can have the best ground. You know, we can have this, that and the other. It's no good if we're playing in step 10 all of a sudden. Yeah, but... Because the, the results ain't going with us. That's very, very diff difficult. I've got a mate who might be tuned in today. He supports Ban Banbury United, you know. But they're probably se several tiers higher. But... They find it difficult to hold hold on to managers, to hold on to good players. The danger is other clubs uh, a tier or two above you will keep cherry picking your players. And I'm what I'm coming at is can't we give it all a massive like boost so that suddenly bang you've got a, a, a ground a bit nearer to North London, you've got some spare cash to go and attract better players and so on. I mean, are your players being paid, for instance? Now, no, it's not. There's no money. Dull Square do not pay players. Oh, yeah. no, there's no money at step eight. They, yeah. they play because they want to play. Yeah. Yeah. That, that won't come until we start, like I say, step six is when, when, when the money starts becoming a, 
becoming a, a, an issue. Um, as far as taking money at the gate and paying it out. Yeah, I mean, I have you know, to say, sorry, lads, for hog hogging this, but I can see the way, and I've spoken about this on Cannon Fodder many times, the cronky Arsenal is not the Arsenal you knew or I knew or John no, knew or any of his yeah. team. Yeah. You know, it's a different baby, this is, and this is a multinational <laughs> club. So deep down, Stanley Cronky is not particularly worried about... Um, Actually, what he called us, this is a phrase, legacy fans. Now, as soon as yeah. they give you a title, they put you into, into a box. And they'll go, oh, yeah, Terry, he's he's a legacy fan. John, he's a legacy fan. Dave and all that. And Alex, um, what, what I can see is Arsenal becoming an international club, right? Work away. But in the meantime, what we want, and we can talk about this a little later, myself and Tim are involved in what you call grassroots sport here in Ireland, where if everybody's an amateur. Yeah, yeah. They do it for pure love. They have some link with the area that the sort of club, club is in, you know. Um, and all those things are, to me, that that's a good breeding ground for a good club, uh, albeit we might be five or six tiers below, but we, we can build from, from that, do you know? Yeah, one one thing I, I just want to add to that is, and, and I know you didn't mean it this way, but I must emphasise this point to people that are listening. We're not against Arsenal. We're not anti-Arsenal. We're not going up against them. We, 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 one, we can't, and secondly, we wouldn't. If we were anti-Arsenal, we wouldn't exist. We, we're not a phoenix club. You know, Arsenal haven't died. No one's risen from the ashes, and, and we're not a protest against Arsenal. You know, um, we're, we're Arsenal fans that were set up, and it's always been set up this way as an option. So if you if you disillusion with the elite game, if it's the money, if it's the tickets, whatever, here's an option for you. That's why we're always set up. We're not going up against Arsenal. So when when we mention Cronky, it's not Cronky's Arsenal. You're right. We accept that the game's changed. You know, the money ain't going to come out anytime soon. Um, but what we have got is an option for those that are either disenchanted or struggling or whatever. And that's where we want to keep our our identity, if you like. Tim, a different different sport in the hurling. Um, how does it compare? Uh, it's, very similar. it's very yeah. similar to in, in the sense that uh, we are a club here. It's all amateur based, amateur players. We have an underage system. We are obviously developing those players come up through the ranks. Uh, we, we we have our own assets for our own field. Uh, people play membership with the gym. Uh, there's, a, a, you know, there's people that can, be, can use that. But ultimately, uh, Dave, it's the very same. The, 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 the manager of the team doesn't get paid. The elite players or the players playing in the, in the senior adult team, no one gets any money. But of course, that's the GA the, the top level. But like, yeah, it's, very, and it's community based and people are there because they love it. And to be honest, Dave, um, Kind of listening to you there, Jim, and it fills you up with hope, you know, that that sort of uh, initiative can be taken on by what's the 75 people. And, uh, like, I mean, it was a famous uh, a, a club in North America, it was called Rockland GA, and 75 members went in. Some of them famous, they didn't even tell their wives. They all went in, they got loans or for 30,000, and they ended up spending whatever it was, close to a million euro. And uh, they bought a ground and they developed it. And I'd say that's very similar to what you've done here. People that were genuine football supporters uh, kind of rallied around. They got themselves. And like like you say, at this stage, it's nothing to do with money. It's all getting promoted, get to the next league, yeah. playing good football, and everyone enjoying it. So, look, Dave, uh, I'd like to wish you the best. And uh, to me, it seems like a really honest uh, endeavour and reach, you know, uh, kind of a, a certain amount of you know, you'd have to admire it at several levels yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you very much that's the whole point it's, it's, we, we want to put the fun back into it yeah. you know was it George Best famously said you know he used to look around and at the end of his career there was no one smiling in, in the crowd he said you, you, you know people go to football for an escape they go there to, to enjoy themselves yeah. you know if you take that out then what you got yeah yeah and, like, yeah, and, that's, and that's what we want we want, fan, we want fans to be you know, wanting to feel like they've got a part to play, giving them, giving them a voice, being an integral part of the club, and and, and watch some Saturday football. Yeah, yeah, and like people, yeah. people identify like obviously Terry's was very rare 
in the in the in the shadow of the Highbury Stadium, like but you know what I mean? But so it, that that was the Arsenal of his era. It was local lads playing it. And I'd say I don't know, and Terry obviously answer itself, but I presume that earlier teams and those players, you probably have an affinity to those you probably Well, I, I was at school with jo John Matthews, who yeah. played for Arsenal. Yeah. I met Brian McDermott's parents, he was originally from the Slough area, and they became friends. You know, you'd bump into these people either at school or at work or whatever, uh, and you'd meet their brother or Ch Charlie George went to Hol Holloway School, for instance. You know, in fact, a, uh, a cousin of mine used to be his girlfriend when, when they were about 14 or 15. And he said to her, Pat, he said, I, I can't take you out next week because he used to meet every week to go to the film or something. She said, why not, Charlie? He says, oh, I'm training. And she said, Training? Training? What do you mean training? She says. He said, "I played for the Arsenal youth team." That's the first I had ever ever heard of it. You yeah. know. So they were. <laughs> there, there was that affinity with the, the local area. Now I know things move on. Of course they do. But the one thing that you've got that Arsenal no longer have really is that close affinity with. All right, we all sing. You know, North London oh. forever. But when I sat there, I did a season ticket um, up in West West Upper. And I'd have a fella from Berlin next to me one day. Then, then the next week, it'd be a fella from Milan. And I'm going, how much do you pay for that ticket? And, of course, they were getting them on whatever ticket market there, there are, paying an absolute fortune. Yeah. And I'm thinking, my kid can't go, go to this. I can't get in. I can't afford it. He's still a school kid. And yet, I, and it just felt wrong yeah. that the, the real, the lifeblood, like Tim, that Tim and I will go to a match and then, our kids will go to a match and then here in, in hurling like yeah. and they can all come come along but you can't do that now if john wanted to take a kid or his or his i don't know his friends i mean it just doesn't happen and that when you lose that link with the local area then yeah. you're going wrong fast and it won't be long before we have arsenal america arsenal new york and all of that stuff okay yeah. it's not going to happen in the blink of an eye but believe me it's not far away and and I then hopefully um, Dial Square will be in in a situation where they can begin to sort of mop up those supporters who want to see the that who want the link with the local people, not people coming from all parts of Europe and and the states. You know. Mm. Well, I tell you what, Dial Square not doing too bad, Dave. I think we're top of the table. We're on top of the table. We we had a we had a there you go. 100% record. We had um, we had a big pre-season. We, we had 10 pre-season games. Um, Steve Brown, the manager, and Matt Bunyan, his, his assistant, got a cracking bunch of lads together. Um, and we had 10 friendlies. We, we played a lot in Guildford because we didn't want to play at Chertsey because their season started earlier and they were obviously involved in FA Vars and FA Trophies. And what we didn't want to do is arrange friendlies. They get drawn at home. And we got to then make last minute arrangements, which which is not fair for the fans, it's not fair for the players, not fair for the opposition, anything. So we played a lot in Guildford. We played I mean, we're step eight. We played predominantly step six, seven, and uh, seven, six, and five step teams, and we only lost the ones. We won seven convincingly as well. We drew the two and, and only lost the one, and that and we hit a bar in the last minute of that one as well. Um, but it really might. We, we really hit the ground running on the on on the back of that, you know, fitness levels and and ability wise, and the team is just so together, and we've won our first five, which is fantastic. But we're under no illusions, you know. There's plenty of teams out there that can turn us over. There's plenty of teams that see us with a big target on our back that would love to turn us over. Um, so we're just going to keep our feet on the ground, keep working hard. Like I say, Steve and uh, Matt are doing a brilliant job. The lads are all together, and it's just hard work and keeping their feet on the floor, and hopefully that will continue. Yeah. Are so you guys actually going to Arsenal matches? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, well, most of them are. Um, I, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't been – I'm going to lie, right? I haven't been regularly since 2010, obviously. Of course you go back, you know. It's, once it's in your blood, it's in your blood, isn't it? It's like a light switch. You can't turn it on and off. Um, but, yeah, um, there's – uh, most of the, like the crowd last week, we were missing regulars because they were down at Bournemouth. If our game clashes with, with one at the Emirates, we know there's going to be people missing because they still go. We're all Arsenal fans, you know, and that will never ever change. We're all Arsenal fans, and and yeah, we of course we still go. Yeah, 
Yeah, clearly. yeah. So, Dave, I'm going to give you a couple of wishes, right, that you would yeah. like for Star Square FC. What would be your two wishes? My two wishes, before I croak it off this planet, I want to see... FA Cup, third round, Dahl Square v Arsenal, down at our place. Oh, there you go. There you go. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll rough the pitch up. None of this none of this carpet. We'll, we'll rough the pitch up. And for two reasons. I'd like I'd like to see us, obviously, in that situation, Dahl Square, because a lot of people have already put a hell of a lot of hard work into this club yeah. and a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort. And if we get to that stage, then that'll be... That'll be the end goal, really, you know, playing league football at that level. And also, if there's any Arsenal fans that don't know what we're about, they can come down to our place and see what we're about. You know, we all know what Arsenal's about, but, you know, come and have a look at us. Um, second wish. Second wish. Blimey. <laughs> I don't know. Does it have to be to do with football? Because I'm really struggling. No, it doesn't um, have to be. Arsenal win a Champions League. That's one thing I haven't seen. We nearly you can't saw have it. it. You can't have that, Dave. Sorry, mate. You can't, nearly you can't saw have it. That. <laughs> I, well, it's one wish. I can wish whatever I want, and that, that, that <laughs> would do it. If, if, if I get oh, I'll start winning European or whatever it will be called. Then I don't know champions, or champ, champion stroke Saudi League, whatever they're going to call it. Yeah, and, probably. Um, and and Dahl Square Arsenal third round FA Cup. That do, mate. Lovely, jubbly. Uh, Don, Gouda, you bit quiet there, mate. What's going, what's going on with you? No, I'm listening. I'm listening to the boys. I'm taking it all in. I, I've got to give Dave and his mates respect because anyone yeah. organising grassroots football, it's all voluntary. It's all, yeah. it's all our yeah. graft yeah. and pure love of the game. You know what I mean? They, they love the game. So that's yeah. your main yeah. thing. Um, yeah, true. If, if I and it's like, like you don't, don't realise as well. There's so much you don't realise as well. Something, you know... Oh, um, that mean everything, and there, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hell of a lot of red tape. Yeah, there's there's, there's certain uh, parameters you have to deal with. The one that got us last, got me last season, is you get fined for not uh, providing refreshments for the away team at half time and full time, so you can get fined twice. Oh dear. Well, it, it's just little things like that. You you got to have someone who can do it, and you ain't got to worry about it. Yeah, you know, um, it's just li it's just little things like that on top of everything else that, that goes with it. But you know, we're we're, we're learning fantastically. You know what, what we're doing at the moment is is, and I'm not going to be. I, I suppose I'm a little bit biased, but but what we've got set up, I feel personally, it's just it's miles ahead of anything else that we've got at our level. It really is. It's just so professional and transparent. We're running it as a viable business. You know, not not in that sense, but. So the fans have got something, and 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 it's getting it's got a bit it's got longevity as well. That's the main thing. Yeah, we don't want to do all this, and then the next season we go, oh, where do we go from here? You know, we got we got plans, we got plans, we got we had a five year plan to get to step six. We got plans after that. Um, so yeah, it's it's we we're going in the right direction, and it, and it's going it's going really well as well. Lovely job, please. Alex. Can I just? Give a yeah. little mention, right, to the club, my local club, Enfield. So I used to go and watch them a lot. They got turned over, sold out, stadium, everything, blah de blah. Anyway, they were like nomads for ten years. They had, they had a club, but they never had a stadium. But the fans always wanted that club reunited, and mm. eventually, someone in there, it's become an all, it's a fan based club. They're back at Donkey Lane. I don't know if you know that. It's the athletics track down on the A10 mm -hmm. Enfield. But yeah. they started low, right down in the lower leagues, worked their way up. Now they're nearly getting a 1,000 fans. You know what I mean? That don't sound a lot. It don't sound... But to them, it is brilliant. a lot. That's brilliant. Next, next week, they're in the FA Cup again and they're one, they're one step away from the first round. Now, if they're wow. getting that first round... That's a lot of money going to them. Do you know what I mean, Dave? Mm. But yeah. uh, that will really help them out. But what clubs like yourself has got and Enfield, Enfield do have a lot of Arsenal and a lot of Spurs fans because where they are, North London. But what they've got there, you can turn up with your dog, you can turn up in a wheelchair, go by the front, you know, you can bring your mum, your nine, you can bring your mates. You can go and have a drink with the players in the uh, yeah. director's room at half-time. Or like, it ain't like Arsenal, mate. 
but yeah, we we got a club our clubhouse at Chertsey. We got a clubhouse pitch side by the halfway line. As long as you got a plastic glass, you can drink while you're watching the football. That's what you they've know, got. Pitch Bang side in, in the halfway thing. line. They've got a little clubhouse. You can go there, have your pint, bring your pint to the thing. I think one <laughs> our keeper a couple of years ago got in bother because one of the fans gave him a gave him a pint. For a laugh during the game while he's up the other end, and he took a sip <laughs> out of it, didn't he? Nah. I'm thinking they got a lot of trouble. For <laughs> but, uh, you know what I mean? That's the that's the sort of community spirit it is. You know what I mean? And I think grassroots football clubs like yourself, once they get going, all right. Uh, Terry says about going near Arsenal. I suppose, yeah, realistically, maybe that would be all right, but. It might not be only Arsenal fans that are coming to watch you now, you know what I mean? You exactly, we got all sorts. Fan. You might all sorts. Because let's face it, the Arsenal fans, the Arsenal fans that are going to the games now, most of them are season ticket holders, a lot of them are tourists, and and the rest, we're just like, it's a lottery to get a ticket, isn't it, in that ballot thing or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. so, oh, so there is a big market for other fans to come and watch and a club like yourself. I always say, go and watch your local community club. Wherever you live, whatever team you support, go and watch them because you're supporting your local team, giving a bit to the economy. And I'll tell you what, it's just as good an experience as going to the Emirates. Honestly, for me, it is because you can't see, oh, I'm, I ain't seen that geezer for years, you know what I mean? And uh, have a pint. Yeah, sure. You can watch the games I, on telly and everything. But, uh, I like the old North Bank days. The old, when, on the old North Bank, you know, you, you you stand in one place, you be there with your mates, and then you go and talk to another little group, and then you be talking to another little group. You didn't know their names, you knew their faces, and you exactly, just talk to everybody. And then, like, like you've mentioned, Terry, bloke from Milan, bloke from where was it, Berlin? You yeah. know, down, down, down at non league, down at Dole, down all the non league grounds, you know, especially where we got the, you, you, got, you can have a nice pint by the side of the ground and, and, and just chat to people. You know, you're Going not limited. It's all support, back in the old days. It was all about supporting your local club, weren't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it was our local club. It ain't now. It's a global business. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I do know for a fact there's a lot of gooners now and they do go and support. Wherever they live, they will go and support their local team. Do you know? Because basically they can't get tickets. But like Terry says, legacy, legacy fans... They're not interested in us. We, no, I don't know yeah. why, because we've still got kids. We've got grandkids that will go and buy their shirts or whatnot. But, yeah, uh, yeah we have no interest in them. They don't, you know what, don't John, do you, do you ever remember about three or four seasons ago when we played Cologne? And Cologne hadn't played against, hadn't played in, in, in the European competitions for a long time, maybe four or five years ago. And uh, when when I came up out of Arsenal Tube Station, they said the the, the kickoffs delayed because loads of Cologne supporters have turned up and stormed stormed the turnstiles. So fine, I got into the ground. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, do you remember? I got into the ground and he said, like instead of whatever it was, quarter to eight yeah. kickoff, it was going to be half past eight. So I thought, I oh, know what I'll do. I'll have a bit of a walk around. I have, have a, and I, I found myself on the lower tier at the um, at the clock end, and that bottom bit there i said to everybody around me what's this called they said it's the o oaps right <laughs> and, I went, I, they, and they said you can bring your grandson or something but the view, the view was absolutely awful the rain could be dripping down the sort of back of your neck if you're up the front and and i'm thinking for the amount we pay this isn't enough this you can go and see a west west end show for a fraction of the price that you yeah. can go and see yeah. okay yeah. yes you know, it's all about uh, people ask me about tickets, and I say, well, you won't get tickets for for the really big games. But I remember quite a few games over the years that it was on a Wednesday or something, and you'd be working hard at work, and it was bitterly cold, this December January time, and you'd go, well, I'll go and see them. And then I remember after one match, I went out, and it must have been quarter, half ten, quarter to eleven, and they kind of only allow you enough time to finish a pint. That's fine. I've got myself a pint and I'm standing there. My hand was freezing cold. Yeah. Nowhere to sit. This is West mm. Upper. You're kicked out of the seating area after the final whistle. And I'm talking to a, another couple of lads and all of us were, were like shivering. And I'm thinking, this this is elite football. And, 
you know, okay, maybe you're not playing that much in uh, in 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 the regular part of the stadium. And I know the last year I went there, I, I decided to splash out on a club level ticket. Well, that's 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 lovely. Free all the drink you can drink at half time. You 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 you're in the heat before half time and after the match. You can stay for two hours. They have they have music playing. They have live bands. And I'm thinking. But the way the average fan is treated is, I think, for, for elite soccer, is poor, man. Mm. But you know what I love most about um, grassroots football, Dave? There's no yeah. VAR. Oh, yeah. what a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's probably true. one thing. It don't improve the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've got, yeah. you know, that thing with Liverpool, you know, they're all crying for a replay. That's just, that's accommodating the problem. It ain't dealing with the issue. You know, they've got to be in it. Just that goal line technology, you know, was it in, was it out? That's all you need. Leave everything else up to the to the ref, whatever colour they are in now, red, green, mauve. Um, and the other thing as well, I reckon, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I reckon they should start checking betting player regularities. Oh, yes, 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 yes. My, my granddad always said to me, wherever you got big money, you got big crime. And I'm, I'm convinced there's something going on. You know, you can... You can edit that out, or is it live? Oh, it's live. Never mind, it's in. But I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I do apologise if you've heard this story before, but in one of our glory years, uh, when, when, when we won the league, um, I can't pinpoint the exact year, but you can look it up. We played Wimbledon away in late September, right? And we were going really strong. You know, we were at the top of the league, everything fine. And... Uh, we were one nil down at half time, all right. So, and it was on telly, so I'm watching it on telly. I didn't go down to Plough Lane as it was at the time. And uh, the players are lining up to, to kick off, and suddenly, light light failure, all the lights went. Yeah, yeah that was Sellers Park. I oh, was at that game. Oh, was that Sellers Park? It right. was Sellers Park. Park. I reckon it was yeah. the old um, half time, full time betting, didn't I? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, what it? they found yeah. out later, because we didn't play them again until until the sort of new year when, when we were on a roll and, and we sort of beat them easily. But people forget we, we were one nil down. Now, what they found out was somebody, and they don't know who, but I, I bet they, they, they have a list of names it could have been, <laughs> that had access to the, the, uh, the big fuse box. And there must be massive fuse boxes for floodlights. Um, somebody yeah. removed... Or it fell out of the of the fuse box and, and wasn't found. Now and then they suddenly linked it then with Far East betting oh, in, the, right. in the Far it's East. Yeah. Really yeah. Really big. But by then a season or two had gone by and no newspaper, because they're all, all all in on this, no newspaper made a big thing about it, right? Because if you hit the integrity of the game, oh, yeah. there's no game. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can remember being at a game. I don't know if you remember it. I don't think it was Arsenal, but John Artson took a centre. He, he kicked off and just whacked it straight out over the dugouts. Oh, yeah, of there. And, and, and you, you could bet on first throwing, couldn't you? Yeah, Romantic Tizier said. Le did the same, didn't he? Yeah, he must have said, look, if we get the centre, we'll have a throwing. It's easily done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're doing cricket. Well, well all they? that bet, all that betting on corners, throw-ins, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the only thing I've got about Tony Ivan Tony coming in. If he's been caught once, how do you know he's not been up to that for for a long, long yeah. time? Yeah, to but he's honest, not the only one. He's not the only one. No, no. 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 It's a little drop Who's in the pressure. Who's yeah. being pressured by these big games? Who's being pressured? Players, a, lot, a lot of football clubs have. Uh, a lot of the football clubs are sponsored by uh, betting firms, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What are all these things you know I, mean? uh, I yeah. think gam I think gambling and betting is rife in football. It's always been like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who was yeah. Fowler, not Fowler, the uh, who was the Man United p player, wasn't it? Or the Liverpool player that was doing it. He got, he I got think Paolo Rossi, wasn't it? Paolo Rossi before the World Cup got was inside when he for doing it or something. He come back oh, and, and oh, yeah, wow. Paolo Rossi before the World yeah. Cup. Uh, he turned oh, and he come out and turned up the top scorer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, think now, I used to have, have right. a mate but next to me. I used to have this mate next to me, very clever guy, pharmacist and all that. But he loved he loved the bet. 
and we we'd moved to the uh, east stand upper tier in the old stadium and about halfway through the second half we went a goal down and the next minute he picks up his mobile phone and he phoned somebody and it was obviously a, a, a betting shop or something and he said what are, what are the odds for arsenal winning 2-1 and the bloke must have said 30 to 1 or 12 to 1 or whatever and he went right I'll, I'll i'll have i'll have a tenner on that and after that i noticed all the time he, he was betting all the all the time during matches or during matches <laughs> but like, the fun not got out of it then like you know what i mean i'm not it's not if you're if you're, if you're there to watch football and you're there to watch you know, Good players do, but like you're waiting for a throw in, or you're waiting, oh. for, or are you waiting for? Oh no, we'll be we're 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 ahead, we're ahead now, or just hold hold it hold it close it down. No, you're not, waiting, you're not watching football then. It's just you might, you might as well you might as well put the money on the stock market and watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I had my way, I'd stop all that betting on like that and just leave it leave it as betting on the result and that you know, yeah yeah. yeah. As soon as I kick off. Yeah. 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 Guys, let's go, to live chat. let's go to live chat for the first time. I may be the first and last time, actually, uh, uh, this evening. So we've got our moderator, Ashadiz, is a uh, Hey Up Gooners. He also follows hey. up my friend, uh, rest in peace, uh, Kathy Ferguson. And uh, we've got Mike Draper is in the live uh, chat. Uh, Hi, evening, Mike. Mike. <laughs> he <laughs> says, attendance. Attendance, 105. 105. 105. Is that what it was? Yeah, brilliant. And, and Manacroft brought their share as well. That was that was a good thing about it. It felt like a it felt like a good atmosphere. Yeah, you know, I must yeah. say, well done, and Manacroft. They brought about, oh, I don't know, twenty five. You reckon twenty five fans? Wow, a little What's bit capacity? of an atmosphere. What's the capacity, Dave? Uh, it's Chelsea, it's three and a half thousand. I think something around three and a half thousand. Well, I can yeah. see an outing coming, lads. Can Cannon fodder goes to uh, oh, Dial Square. Yeah, yeah, we'll look after you. Be more than welcome. Well, I was supposed to make the journey last year and I couldn't. <laughs> so, okay. After Spurs I will do. fans. I will do. <laughs> What's that, John? Dave, have the Spurs fans got a club like yours? No, nah, not the well, I haven't even bothered looking. I don't I don't look at anything to do with him, you know. What's the old sign if they were playing at the bottom of the garden, I'd draw the curtains. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I really don't care. Um, I was just thinking that would be, be a good game that be a good game to get a good crowd going you know what I mean uh, that would be well I think Acne have an Acne got a side I think they, they, they got a non-league side I think they're a couple of levels above us that's probably the closest yeah, but, uh, have, yeah. no uh, sorry Aaron Guy Aaron Guy Aaron Guy oh wow um, but mm. it just brings me on to another point because people say to me all the time you know have you got Tottenham fans in, in the club no, we haven't. I just want to make that clear. We haven't. And, you know, hopefully it stays that way. But my, my bigger point is, is how disillusioned are you with the elite game if you go and support a team that's predominantly something to do with your main rivals? That's one point we always, we always say. Everyone's welcome down at our place. You know, it's free to get in. Everyone's welcome. We're not gonna, we, we don't interview you on the gate. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, every, everyone's welcome. Yeah, uh, tell there's a question here for you from Mike. He says, uh, Does Terry know any ex players he knows a lot uh, who, who uh, could uh, send you could send them down to watch Dahl Square? Right, listen, we've got Peter Mar Mar Marinello who's down in Bournemouth, we've got John Matthews who's down in Cornwall. Right, I was at school with him. Um, let me try and think. Uh, I'm, I'm lost touch with Brian McDermott, but there probably is somewhere along the line. Actually, my, my son was at school with a kid called Jeffrey Monacana, and uh, Michael was doing his. My son Michael was doing his A, a levels, right? And he came with me. I managed to get the ticket next next to me, off the woman next to me, and uh, he said. Uh, and after the main Arsenal match, they said, "Now we're going to put on our youth team." And on comes Jeffrey Mon Monacana at sixteen, seventeen, maybe, maybe yeah, seventeen, I think, at the time. And and my son was struggling to do A, a levels, and you know, and it was a tough old gig, you know. <laughs> And, and they, he he knew Jeffrey well, and Jeff Jeffrey w was um, was earning a grand a week, a grand a week, man, uh, and, and he didn't make it into the first team, but he, he had a career. And last time he was down uh, down in Plymouth, but uh, 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 it's a whole diff, diff, different ball game. But there are players about, but they in terms of well known players. Well, I do know the pitch and putt course where um, George Graham. 
and uh, Frank McClintock Mac- played, yeah. but I don't know whether, whether they're mobile enough to, to get down to church. See, maybe they are. If I see them, I'll ask them. We have had a course. We have had a course of cup winners cup winner play for us a couple of times last season. Who's that? That's Where right, yeah. Sally playing for us? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he made a cut and he scored. He scored from the halfway line as well. He, he, he can still put it on a twenty p coin. His, his legs might have gone, but his, his brain certainly hasn't. Pleasure yeah. to watch him. But yeah, he, he 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 made a couple of appearances for us. But as far as um, ex players, we have tried. Um, I know our chairman. He's got he got he's got some links to some players. Um, I don't know if I don't know if there's some weird thing like they're under contract, you know, and not allowed to be seen. Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There might be something to do with that. I'm not sure. But well, funny you. Yeah, it's definitely that, something we're looking into. I think they do have that. What's that contract called? It's like a, a gagging contract. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I noticed that this season. I don't know if this is the elephant in in the room. Now, if you noticed that Steve Round suddenly went. At the end, at the start of this season, nobody knows knows why. So there's probably a backroom row, and he's probably said to Arteta, he's probably st- stood up. This is conjecture, but he may have stood up to Arteta and said, "You're too predictable. You're too this." And suddenly, Steve Round's gone. You know. So, yeah, but you won't yeah. ever find out because these mm-hmm. players, uh, these uh, these coaching staff, are paid an absolute fortune to sort of keep keep their uh, yeah. their. their yeah. Track- yeah, and I, yeah. I only hear stuff from people who's my son's at, uh, plays in the seven aside team with guys whose parents work for, for the Arsenal. So I get the gossip through them. Yeah. But you know what, Mike? Forget about ex Arsenal players. We'll, we'll come down. We'll come down and support the Dahl squad. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, perhaps Arsenal will be up for a couple of Dahl players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the other way. Never know. Never know in a few years. There you go. I think concentrating on your local fan base is a good idea at the moment, anyway. Yeah. Concentrate on the local gooners in your area. Get them interested and build it on. Build it on. That'd be a great day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, like I said, we got, we got, we got, we got two years before step six. We've really got to strike, you know, that's when we can take money at the gate. So that's, that's what it's all about. And of course, the main thing, we've got to do it on the pitch. Yeah. That's the one. have something for them to watch and cheer on, you know, and do well. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's not worth having everything behind the scenes like so if we, we ain't doing it on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think, Dave, when we come down, we're going to probably um, stream or broadcast live. Uh, on hey, our good idea. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, that'd be good. Let us know. And we, like I say, yeah. we'll look after you. No problem. Nice one. Just get me the mug. The red one. The red mug. Yeah, I've got <laughs> one of those. <laughs> Yay! One nice one. There you go. John, you got there your you way go. one. There you go. I've got the Tottenham <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, so I've done it. Oh, you almost have oh, there. Oh, he's got Sorry. Oh, my face. Swap shop. Swap yeah. shop. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> <laughs> and Mike says, um, so many um people can't get tickets to see Arsenal. Come and join like minded fans at the dial. There you go, you've been told. Oh, what's happening there? He's, he's popped out again. Oh. Uh, uh, what's That's this? definitely not mine. Uh, we've uh, even got a, a Fulham supporter. We've got a Fulham season to get older. Oh, very good. Wow. And he's a good bloke. Yeah, he's a good bloke. See, we, we, you know, the, the thing is with non-league, John, you probably see the same at non-league. I've, I, I, you know, before I got involved with Dial, I used to go to two in the mission. And I, you, you stand next to Chelsea fans, Arsenal fans. Um, you name it. It's, 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 it's not... It's like you say, it's more of a local thing where you live locally. It doesn't matter who you support. It doesn't matter you know, who your main team is. It's where, all about you your community. Uh, we get all sorts over there, you know. Women, old ladies, disabled, yeah. uh, people that yeah. do. It's just a community, do you know what I mean? It's, That's what it's And, they, with, and yeah. they all love yeah. football. Yeah. They all really know, know their football. There's a yeah. difference yeah. between fans and... Uh, Supporters, shall I say? If you if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. Yeah. Just yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm here. Look, I'm at Arsenal. I'm at the Emirates. Here, yeah, look at me. These yeah. people really know their stuff when you go over there, and it's it's great. It's it, yeah. it's all part of the community. You know? I think, Dave. Another thing. What? Excuse me going on but um i think if you get someone doing your social media that that sort of way 
uh, yeah, tick, TikTok and what's it called? Instagram, that sort of thing. You might even be doing it. I don't know. We're on it. We're, in, we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on um, the other thing. I was going to say is Pitch Hero on our website. Mm. Um, and this is where Andy comes in. So he's fantastic with this. Um, if if you log into Pitch Hero and get um, and, and log That's in there, put your email address in there, then you'll get all, all our updates, our email updates direct from the club. Um, but yeah, we we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on. Oh, what's, I can't remember the one. What's the one that just does the photos? Uh, Flickr. We're Matt, on that. So yeah, we got pl- we got plenty of platforms that we're working with. Yeah, that's Brilliant. a good way of generating fans. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Do you know what we've come to an end uh, on this this special easy talk with uh, Dave? Send me my mug. I want a mug. I will do. Yeah, lovely job, Lee. I'll uh, send guy, my mug, probably. Thank you so very much. And actually, uh, Dave, um, I forgot to leave the link. To, you've got a website as well, haven't you? We have, yeah, dalsquarefc.com. Do you want me to mention the game tomorrow as well? So we're playing, oh, we're playing. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, we're playing, we, we got a cup, we're in the first round of the cup tomorrow. Oh, we are away to Barnes. It's dead opposite, on the other side of the river at Craven Cottage. Oh, yeah, down, yeah there we are. Yeah. Down there at the Barn Elm Sports Centre. Hot bars free kickoff. Um, again, free to get in. If you want to come down, any South London Gooners. If you want to be, in, we'll be more than happy to see you as usual. Lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. Uh, and that's it. Um, H-Men, Tim, yeah. Chell. Well, boys, we're, 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 we're off tomorrow to a semi-final, right? That's right, Jeff. That we, We're in a little place in East Clare in the Republic of Ireland called um, Scarif. And our local team, and Tim has been training these guys since, since they were young, young teenagers. And they're in the county semi-final. And I think somebody told me the, the other day they haven't won it since 1953. Yeah, or 70 years. Yeah. Well, well, good luck tomorrow. All the best. Sound like Tottenham. No, they no, get, no, get on we'll with it. Best of luck tomorrow, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. And that's, that's it. Right. Um, the next that's song you'll see will be on Monday. I don't think my brother will be doing uh, the watch long for the game on Sunday against Chelsea. Chelsea? City. 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 Yeah, anyway. Anyway, Dave, you're always welcome on the channel, mate. Always welcome. Thank on the you. Channel. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us on. Nice to meet you again, gentlemen. Uh, so we'll we'll talk you, about yeah, broadcasting live from, from, from one of your matches uh, before the season is done. But, guys, okay. it's, been, it's, been, it's been a blast. It's been an absolute blast. Anyhow, guys, uh, that's it. So, so from. Uh, what was it John the Geezer Guna with work, the colours? Hey, yeah. who are Dale yeah. Square? Have they got a song, well, Dave? Dave. I've got to mention our sponsor as well, Matty Harley Woods. There you oh, yeah. go. They've yeah. they, they, they given us a bit of sponsorship for the next two years, which is very, very appreciative. And it's, a, it's left us in a very strong financial position. So I've got to mention Matty Harley Woods. Well, Dave, what, can you tell us what Matt, Matty Harley Woods does? What service they provide? They're one of the leading um, wealth management and employee benefit uh, fa- um, companies in the UK. They're based wow. in Leicester. They do. Um, they, uh, I think Leicester Tigers play at Matty Hollywood Stadium, and they also. I'm, I think I'm not sure if they still do, but they did have uh, a little bit of sponsorship with Aberdeen up in Scotland. Oh wow! Oh wow! So we're we're more than very very close to there on board with us. Well, let's hope in ten, 10 years' time they'll 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 be pleased that they sort of jo- joined in with this. Yeah, we're up in, we're, yeah, we're up yeah. D- Division three or um, whatever. Yeah. Dave, I think merchandise could be key as well because what we've been in the Dial Square, a lot of the old legacy gooners love all this stuff. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, well, the shirts on merch, are online. If you go on our website, the shirts are online. We've got the mugs. We're we're looking at bits and pieces, but what we don't want to do is come up with a load of stuff and all of a sudden it's you know, we want to keep the cost down as well. The, the mugs yeah, we got on sale yeah, at yeah. games because we got some ridiculous quotes in in sending them to the UK, and it just you know we didn't think it was fair charging people what they what we'd have had to charge. So we're yeah. still looking, um, yeah. but yeah, there will be plenty of merchandise coming out. We have got a few ideas hopefully coming out when the, when the weather gets colder, something to keep you keep keep you warm on the touchline. <laughs> um, so yeah, watch this space. Nice one, nice one. Anyhow. And now, this uh, has been a cannon fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Who are the